The fight for equality for women is a struggle not only here at home, but around the world. Here are some statistics. More than 129 million girls are not attending school. Every two seconds, a girl is being forced into marriage. Our next guest is tackling these and other issues that are facing girls and women. And it's a pleasure to welcome back to the morning show, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, who joins us on this International Women's Day. Sophie, good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. Happy International Women's Day. And I love it that the show is talking about, you know, how to reach your potential, because this is really what it's about. And, and Canada re really needs and the world really needs that uh, young women and women show up to reach their full potential. So thank you. All right. Well, we just shared a few startling stats. And the sad truth, really, Sophie, is inequality for women is indeed a worldwide issue. Yes, you know, facing our truth is probably the hardest thing we'll ever do in a lifetime. And the truth isn't always accommodating. But when we look at the statistics, it's really telling us that women represent right now 50% of the paid workforce on this planet, uh, compared to 82% for men. Boys' education pri is prioritized in so many regions of, of, of the world um, because they are seen as the main earners, while girls and women are being kept at home and to take care of household chores and other members of the family. Women account for 22.8% of senior positions held in companies worldwide. Come on, let's think about this again. When we doubt that we're making progress, yes, we are, but these are just benchmarks that we are setting because there's you know, so much more work to be done. And right here in Canada, in our own country, microaggressions, violence, discriminations, young women and women are facing their most basic rights uh, being denied just because they are a woman. And, and when you talk to young women across this country, 96% um, of them think that it's important to get involved in politics, for example, but only 12% of them see themselves as standing in office. And I was there uh, a couple of years ago when a young woman visited Ottawa through a program that we'll talk about, and I could see that we're losing this potential and this, and this pool of talent because it's there we just have to uh we just have to make sure that the structures that were built for the workforce adapt to young women and women and the lives that they're leading today and i know sophie for these reasons you decided it was time to take some action and you're now working with plan canada tell us about that Yes, I've been working with them for a couple of years now, um, especially with the program Because I'm a Girl. And now we're focusing on an expanded program called Girls Belong Here. So this program fights for equal representation in leadership in Canada. And what's extraordinary with this program is that the way that we can instill real change in a society is by listening to the people who uh, are suffering. So our young girls and women across this country are telling us what they need, are telling us what they what all the qualities that they have in order to, uh, you know, help the society move forward. And um, we can no longer, you know, be in resistance mode. And when girls are facing these barriers, they keep resisting who they truly are when they're supposed to be their creative selves. So it's really important for these probes that programs to take place because they're empowering youth. And we know that when young women and women are part of corporations, and this happens throughout the whole planet, not just in Canada, there's more employee satisfaction, there's more uh, conflict, better conflict resolution, and there's also better economic um, growth. So who doesn't want that? So it's a, it's a real winning equation for everybody when we get more girls and women involved. And let's talk a bit, if we could, Sophie, about mental health, because as we know, you're a huge advocate when it comes to mental health. In fact, you're a national volunteer with the Canadian Mental Health Association. Can you talk a bit about the impact of inequality when it comes to mental health? Yeah, we don't think about that immediately because, you know, it's an economic equation at first. But yes, all the microviolence, micro -violence, the microaggressions, the discrimination, their most basic rights being denied here in Canada and across the planet in different ways, obviously, uh, really affects the mental health of communities as a whole. Because think about this, all these young women who um, are more likely to suffer from poor mental health because of this situation, uh, exposure to chronic stress, and we know what kind of impact that can have on the physiological and psychological health, uh, low self-esteem, depression. So these young women will be raising our boys and our girls. So this is something that we have to act upon now. And again, it's hard to see ourselves as we are. It's hard to accept that we're not there, but the work has just begun. Sophie, I wanted to ask you about this new study that just came out from 
Leger is showing Canadian men are twice as likely as women to think that gender inequality is blown out of proportion. What are your thoughts on that? It makes me sad to hear that because uh, men and boys deserve to be better informed and better educated on this topic. Um, you know, you said twice as likely. Well, the facts are showing that men are twice as likely, uh, that women are twice as likely to have uh, a generalized anxiety disorder than men, twice as likely to develop depression throughout their lifetime, twice as likely to suffer from PTSD, and more likely to attempt suicide, although men die by suicide 3.63 times um, higher than, than women. And women are four to 10 times uh, likely to develop an eating disorder, which I suffered from. So I kind of know what uh, what this is about. And, you know, sometimes the barriers that we face right here in our own communities are it's it's pervasive. It's more hidden. It's not, you know, in your face because girls are still going to school here and we don't face the same the, 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 face the same barriers as other places on this planet. But it's still happening in this country and the microaggressions and the inequalities are here in our system. And uh, we need all of our young women, but also all of our young boys and men uh, as incredible allies to help us, I would say, build build new foundations for uh, for more equality for all um, for all genders in this society. All right. We know you have a busy day ahead of you. In fact, in less than an hour from now, you're jumping on Instagram uh, for a uh, Instagram live. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I'll be interviewing Ziana Kotadia. She's an incredible young woman. If you only knew the amount of just unbelievably powerful and empowered young women that I'm meeting through through this volunteer work, it's really touching because there are daughters, there are sisters, there are there are friends and um we can learn so much from how they see the world. You know, as we grow as adults, I don't know who's listening right now, but we tend to forget that we were them. And I have two teenagers, so <laughs> I'm going through this now. But um, I think it's really important in order to create real change, to be listening to the voices and to the uh, the desires and the, the dreams of young people. And uh, that's exactly what we'll, be, what, what, what we'll be doing. All right, and you can catch that interview on Sophie's Instagram channel this morning. We'll also be continuing the conversation on the impact inequality has on mental health a little later on the show with Dr. Ariel Dolphin. Sophie, thanks so much for dropping by. Such a pleasure. Happy International Day to everyone.